Spurs rookie Victor Wimbanyama got some great comparison to a current NBA champion. We're going to talk about that and more. You are locked on Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hope you everybody had a great weekend. We're getting ready for the new work week right here on Locked On Spurs. We always thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every single day. Available on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Heads up, everybody. Uh, audio only today. Unfortunately, scheduling could not work out between myself and the guest. Uh, so we couldn't get a video scheduled in. So we're going to do audio. But uh, we'll be back with video sometime this week. And, uh, and just a reminder, it is the off season, So Locked On Spurs are scaled back until... The new season is right around the corner. What are we talking about today? Big man, Mr. Mamu for the Spurs. He spoke about meeting Wimbayama for the first time. And he compared him to NBA champion, NBA MVP holder, Giannis Antetokounmpo. We're going to talk about if that is spot on or more. And then we're going to get into America's team. No, not about Dallas Cowboys. But the Spurs, could the Spurs qualify as America's team? We're going to talk about that and more. And speaking of Wimby, yeah, more high praise. This time from players. Now, a lot of past players have been kind of not giving Wimby a chance. From Tim Hardaway to Olden Polonies. Uh, they're not full believers yet. Even former Spurs Tracy McGrady said the hype is just too big around him. But look, I get it. Mamu's going to have to say what Mamu's going to say about his teammate. He's not going to, you know, talk bad about him. But considering that Mamu played with Giannis in Milwaukee and now comparing him to Wemby, he says a lot about the potential of Wemby. Could he be another Giannis? Could he just be another franchise-altering player as we saw with Giannis? But if he does pan out that way, we got to remember – Giannis didn't become Giannis, the Greek freak, overnight. It took a while. And that's why you have to exercise patience, not just with Wimby, but with the rest of this young core. Uh, you know, Sohan likely is still going to have his ups and downs. Trey Jones likely going to have his ups and downs. Keldon, yes. Remember, half this team cannot even go to a bar and legally drink. They're not even 21 yet. Some teenager, Dominic Barlow, teenager. You know, Sohan teenager, and the list goes on and on. So with teens, you remember back when you were a teenager, you had to learn a lot uh, to get where you are now. And that's exactly what the Spurs are going to have to do as they continue uh, rebuilding, retooling, however you want to classify it. The point is they got some work to do. But should Wimby pan out? Yeah, that praise is going to come, and rightfully so. We're going to be discussing that and more right here on Locked On Spurs. We're going to bring in our guest. He is Joe Garcia of Two Shots Podcast. With Joe Garcia, there's only one Joe Garcia. You cannot compare him to anybody like Mamo did with Giannis to Wimby. Joe, you're one of a kind. Yeah, just like you, Jeff. You're one of a kind, right? There's only one Jeff Garcia. <laughs> we always talk about you and mention you sure. uh, on the, on the uh, Acquired yeah. Taste Podcast. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, Joe is part of the Acquired Taste uh, Network. Uh, he is a producer, and he has his own thing going with Two Shots Podcast. He's going to talk about that and more. Just And also another heads up, everybody. Joe's kind of on a time crunch right now. He has to get to the Acquired Taste. So we're going to try to be speedy here and let Joe go. Hey, it's the off season, everybody. So uh, give us a break here. <laughs> but, Joe, let's talk about what Mamu had to say. So he did an interview with Basket News uh, because Zamamu is playing in the FIBA tournament. So they're talking about him with George, Team Georgia. And they discussed Wimby. And he said he met the kid, you know, nice kid, very professional, you know, all the stuff you expect. But when asked, could he be the, uh, in the mold of Giannis out there? Yeah, the Bucks big man. 
yeah, Mamu pretty much said that, yeah, that there are signs that he could be in that mold. When you look at this them physically, Giannis and Wimby, obviously Wimby, you know, longer reach, you know, height and all that stuff. But they both kind of altered the position of a big man and that being agile and fluid, quick, all that stuff. Do you think Mamu was spot on to compare Giannis and Wimby? I'll just be honest with you. I think it's too soon, man. I mean, everybody's yeah. already hyping Wembyama up so much. And, you know, you look at some of the videos and you see what he's done, you know, as far as the limited minutes he had at the Summer League. I'm excited as a Spurs fan, no doubt, about mm-hmm. one Victor Wembyama. But the comparisons to Giannis, I think it's too soon. I think maybe we should go ahead and just give Wemby time to go ahead and form his own identity. I know we do a lot of that, trying to compare to other players. Can he be like this player? Can he mm-hmm. be like that player? My biggest thing is, what can Victor Wembeyama do on his own? Maybe we shouldn't compare him so much to other mm-hmm. people. Maybe we should be uh, fair and just let him form his own identity and see how he changes the complexion of uh, of the game. You know, maybe even this early on mm-hmm. in his rookie season. So I'm just excited to see what he can do out on the court. Yeah, specifically uh, what Mamu so- sees in Wimby, and again, he played with Giannis in his Milwaukee days, is that they're, that he's very long and athletic. Okay, fine. We'll give him that. Is Wimby athletic? Yes. Is he long? Yes. We know that. Just like good stuff there. Um, do they have great shooting mechanics at, at their position? Sure. But you could almost see similarities there too, Joe. Remember how uh, Giannis had to get uh, his shot adjusted early in his career, and that was a knock on Giannis. It sag off on him, let him try to shoot, don't let him take the the lane. I think Wimby won't need that type of adjustment. I think Wimby has that edge over Giannis in the sense that fine-tuning his shot will be a shorter process than maybe Giannis. What do you think? The thing that Wemby has going for him, I think, is already he has the mechanics of when he's going ahead and taking a shot. I think his mechanics are further along than uh, Giannis was in his rookie season. Uh, the only things that, you know, Wemby mm-hmm. really needs to, to work on is, I think, really developing that mid-range jumper. Uh, even when he's a little bit closer to the rim, it looks like he, might, he has some trouble here and there. Um, you know, when he gets real close, and I think it's because of his length, he just needs to find the right angles and, you know, learn how to playing the complexion, the complexion of, you know, how he's going to be bodied and double teamed, triple teamed mm-hmm. and all that. But I can see the comparisons to, to Giannis as far as the type of player that he could live up to or could be. I think he could probably exceed it, quite honestly, because, you know, he has that length. He has that the handles. He has that court vision. He knows how to go ahead and uh, get his teammates involved. And I like that, you know, because he looks like he has – a pass first mentality. A lot of times he's looking to pass to his teammates, get them involved. And of course, go ahead and get himself involved. So I, I just like everything about uh, Wembe Yama at this point in time, as far as the the mechanics of his game. Now, things that he does need to work on a little bit, probably maybe work on his three point shooting, free throw shooting, you know, but if mm-hmm. he can go ahead and get in the, yeah. in the 30, 32%, 34% from beyond the arc, the kid's going to be great. I mean, you look at his shot and how fluid it is already jeff and and you like what you see yeah yeah and and look you like what you see already in the sample size we have from the two games in las vegas and then of course uh, you know playing in the french league so there's that but will he live up to that generational label like Giannis has done that we're going to be talking about that and more right here on lockdown spurs with joe garcia of two shots podcast follow him on twitter at two shots podcast Uh, Wherever you get podcasts, pick a platform. Joe is there. Hello there. Hey, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times. You heard that right. 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. It's a lot of money. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. Check it out. That's $200 you can spend betting from everything from the money line uh, to the over and under uh, to who you think is going to be the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. I mean, what more can you want? 
Well, there's no better place to bet on MLB than on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I go there. I love that looking at their NBA futures, uh, their, 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 the projections on the Spurs and Wimby. It's all there. You got to go to FanDuel right now. Sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOnNBA and get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOnNBA. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. Hello there. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. You guys are the everydayers. Uh, and uh, next show, likely more Spurs, more Wimby talk, and so much to keep you going in the off season. And we are talking about the comparison Mamu had to make between Wimby and Bucks Atatikumbo and if it's valid. Now, physically, you know, we know that Wimby is taller and longer reach. Okay, we get all that. But the same type of idea is there between the two tall, thin, big guys that can, you know, beat you off the dribble, that can finish in the lane, that has range. Now, we both agree, Joe, that perhaps the shoot, outside shooting tracks uh, easier for Wimby versus Giannis in his rookie season. But here's the thing. Do they both track to become generational? Now, we know that Giannis has already met that. He's won a title. He has MVP. He's on a power team. Wimby already has the label but hasn't proven anything on an NBA regular season stage. Is it? Do you think it was a mistake f- to put the label of generational on Wimby when he hasn't proven anything in the NBA yet? Um, be honest, man. I think it might be because, again, this is going to be the kid's rookie season. He really hasn't done anything yeah. here in the NBA. You've seen what he's done over in the EuroLeague, you know, across the pond, like the kids like to say. But, I mean, mm-hmm. he really hasn't done much here as far as just, you know, create a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement. and. Everybody's enamored with his size, his length, his handles, and what he's mm-hmm. able to do out there on the court. But beyond that, I think he still has a lot to prove uh, to, you know, most of the naysayers. A lot of the, and it's funny because it seems like a lot of the the hate that Wemby gets are from already like retired, has been, and washed up NBA, former <laughs> NBA players, you know, that are really past their prime already and just, you know, saying outrageous stuff to be relevant or, come out on podcast and entertain the people with saying, you know, nonsense. So I just think, you know, I want to see what the kid can do with forming his own identity, kind of putting some of those naysayers to to bed, so to speak, and really see how he can go ahead and make his mark in the NBA. I yeah. think that's what every generational player does. They go ahead and change the game. They make the they make the the rules change, you know, because they're so good. They're so great at what they do. And I think that's what's uh that could be the ceiling for one Victor Wembenyama, but again, you know, I think it's going to take him a little bit of time. He has to get used to, to everything here that goes on in the NBA, the, the style of play, how fast mm-hmm. the game is. But as far as the physicality of it, and you look at what he's, what he's played against over in the Euro league. I mean, he's used to being bodied and getting pushed around. I mean, it's very physical over there more so than mm-hmm. it is here in the NBA. Yeah. NBA is a little soft, but so sure. I think Victor can kind of thrive a little bit here in the paint and, you know, he just got he's just got to get used to things. But I mean, I want to see the kid, you know, go from one end of the court to the other on a fast break, just dribbling the ball all by himself. Doesn't even need any help from a point guard and then just dunk it. I mean, I want to see those yeah. exciting plays from Victor. And when it happens, I mean, Spurs fans are going to erupt, you know, so it's going to be an exciting season, uh, you know, say, to say the least, Jeff. I'm excited. You Did you already get your Wimby Yama jersey? No, no, I have not yet. Uh, and it's not because I'm not, you know, buying into the hype. It's just, I just haven't gotten around to it. But, you know, let's be fair. Mamu did say, you know, as far as the generational thing with Wimby, is that when he develops, you know, and that's the same thing with Giannis. And I think there's another fair comparison there. Giannis wasn't an overnight success. He wasn't the player he was is now. In his rookie year, his sophomore year, it took time. I think both players are, you're going to see that similarity between the two, taking their time to get where uh, at least Giannis is in this uh, discussion here. Wemby's going to have to be afforded the same amount of patience as well. Uh, you know, Giannis didn't get a lot of playing time to start. I mean, Giannis wasn't even a top pick. You know, Wemby was number one overall. 
So overall, Joe, I think I can see the comparison early in their career. The question now is, will Wimby live up to that generational label? All signs are pointing to it. But, Joe, i got to ask you, are you team he is it already? Or are your team, I'm going to have to wait and see before you put that label on him personally i'm I'm team i'm gonna have to wait and see you know and like like everybody else we haven't really seen much of what he can do you know just a handful of minutes at at the spurs summer league let's kind of calm down a little bit and see what he what he can do and what he's capable of in his first season and of course he's going to be able to grow you know as and learn more as every season wanes on but and his you know debut season his rookie season i think there's going to be a lot that he's going to have to prove uh, just like any first round pick, you know, so mm-hmm. I, I think let's just pump the brakes a little bit and see what he, what he can do in the complexion of a full NBA schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like, you know, what Mamu said is nothing outrageous. It's not hot yeah. take or anything. Yeah, there, there, there is. He's just pumping the up idea. the team. In. Yeah, he's pumping up the team. And of course, he's not going to say, well, I think he's going to compare him. To, I think Wimby Sealing is old in Polynesia. He's not going to say that. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it, you know, look, but at least Mamu has a base, a foundation to, to do some comparison playing with Giannis, and he's going to be playing with Wemby. He already had a taste of playing with Wemby before, you know, the, the summer league game started. So ah, you just hope that he's going to live up to that billing, man. You really, really do. And that's what I'm, I think that's one thing. As much as I'm looking forward to the stats and, and, and the highlights and, you know, the blocks, all that stuff that are coming from Wemby. The one thing for me on my list that I'm excited for to see, is he going to live up to that label? Because he's going to hit the rookie wall. He's never played an 82-game season. The French League season is a lot shorter than the NBA season. And that target on his back, you know, how he's going to handle all that. I'm looking forward to seeing that. We know the points in the blocks and the double-doubles, the triple-doubles are coming. We get that. But it's the other stuff. Is he that guy? Is he the next? That's what I am waiting for next season. We're talking with Joe Garcia of Two Shots Podcast. Follow him on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. We're kind of hitting the hyperdrive on the Falcon today because Joe has to go. He has to uh, take care of some business and take do these other project, which is the Acquired Taste with our good friend Michael Jimenez. So we're going to let Joe go in just a few seconds. But hey. Do you like Mudslingers drive through coffee, everybody? I think you should. If you're in San Antonio, you got to go to Mudslingers right now. It's a proud local sponsor of Lockdown Spurs. So if you stayed up too late last night or had a long night at work, need a quick pick-me-up to get you through the day, you want to go to Mudslingers drive through coffee. Located in the Stone Oak area, Mudslinger serves delicious pick-me-ups for busy people on the move. So whether you're in the mood for a latte cold brew or Red Bull-infused lightning bolt, Mudslingers has drinks for every taste. Over 300 five-star reviews cannot be wrong. They got a wide selection of dairy alternatives, low calorie options, caffeine free drinks for when you want to just take it easy. And if you're new to coffee, I recommend the Muslinger. It's a delicious combination of espresso, steamed milk, dark chocolate, and caramel. If you need to get your heart pumping, well, you need to try the Alien. It's inspired by Wimbanyama. It's a full can of Red Bull with green apple and kiwi. Unfortunately, Joe Garcia is weak. He cannot handle that. Damn, Joe. You can't handle a Wimby drink. I don't know Natural. if I'd be able to handle the Wimby drink, man. I think yeah, you can do it. I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm lactose intolerant, so they have dairy-free alternatives. I, I'm on it, man. Oh yeah. Well, there you go, yeah. Joe. I tell you, you should go to uh, Mudslingers Drive Through Coffee right now. But if you're not big into caffeine, well, they have the OG OJ. So basically, what that is is the old school Orange Julius back in the 70s and 80s. It's back. Only at Muslingers, they recreated it just for San Antonio. So go to Muslingers Drive Through Coffee right now, located at 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive, near 21 and 1604. Open every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Find them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, under Muslinger STX, all one word. Life is too short for a bland coffee. All right, let's go to wrap it over our chat with Joe Garcia of Two Shots Podcast. And uh, we're discussing all things silver and black. Hey, I got a quick question for you. So, yeah. n- and no, no, try try to keep the jokes about Devontae Graham to a minimum. No, man. Or, or, yeah, all that stuff. But before news came out that uh, Devontae got in trouble by the league, 
uh, for pleading guilty to uh, DWI. He, he did an interview uh, with former NBA player Theo Pinson, Theo's uh, show, a podcast there. And interesting, he said, who he was asked, who was America's NBA team? So, like in you know, NFL, they say, oh, the Dallas Cowboys, they're America's team. Who would be the equivalent for the NBA? He picked the Knicks. He picked the Knicks as America's team. First of all, agree or disagree with that take, Joe? Man, the Knicks as America's team? No, dude, I'd have to say a hard no. Yeah, Devontae, you might want to rethink that. But, Joe, let's go to make the case why the Spurs should be America's team. So give me two things, two reasons why America should say the Spurs are our team. Well, you, they can keep a lot of uh, what they do as far as the antics off the court <laughs> to a minimum. We've only seen a few instances of, let's say, off the court shenanigans, you know, become public, you know. So for the most part, they have a squeaky clean image. And number two, how can you not cheer for an underdog? You know, the Spurs are always notoriously overlooked, undervalued, yeah. you know, and somehow still, you know, in years past, been able to stay relevant and be there in the conversation when it came to, you know, being championship contenders. Of course, right now is a different time, but again, the Spurs are starting to slowly creep back into the conversation. So they're America's sweetheart, in, in my my opinion, as far as NBA teams go. Yeah, for, for me, the why they're America's team, and I at least have a case for it, is simply this. They have the highest winning percentage of all American team sports, NFL, NBA, and MLB, and NHL all combined. And in the NBA, despite having some lean years of late, they still have the highest winning percentage among teams like the Celtics and the Knicks and the Lakers and the Bulls. Yeah, the Michael Jordan-led Bulls. The franchise-wise, they have a higher winning percentage. Here's the other thing, too, because if you want a team that represents your league, whether it's NFL or NBA, NHL, you, you hit on the head about, you know, keeping the off, seat, off the court distractions to a minimum. But talk about poster child for your league. I'm still baffled why this, why the NBA never put Tim Duncan as the face of the, uh, the league. He was kind of there. But, you know, that was the era of Shaq and Kobe, and they put they put those two guys really in the forefront when yet they showed how team disunity can disrupt good things. So, you know, the whole, you know, ego battle between the two uh, Lakers and how that put an end to that run for uh, the Lakers dynasty. Tim Duncan was there. He a team guy, team first kind of guy. You, don't you don't you think you would want that type of all star, all world generational player to be the face of your league, whether it's NBA or NFL, Joe? Yeah, of course, man. That's that's what you always want. You know, you want your best players to to be talked about. You know, and unfortunately for the San Antonio Spurs, Tim Duncan was Tim Duncan. That's why it was such a great fit, Jeff. You know, he wanted to stay low key. You know, even though he was the arguably the greatest power forward ever, you know? Yeah. And I think San Antonio was a perfect fit for him, you know? And unfortunately, because they look at San Antonio as a small market, they really didn't yeah. talk much about, you know, the San Antonio Spurs or one yeah. Tim Duncan. But it was a great career for Timmy because he could stay under the radar. So San Antonio was a perfect destination. Yeah, and that's the thing too, uh, you know, the the other side of, you know, the, the uh, being the face of a franchise kicked in like small market tim duncan wasn't flashy although i still disagree with that i think although he wasn't flashy like doing rap videos like shaq did and and, and whatnot but he, he was emotional i always say like people think oh he showed no emotion on the court i say bs go back and look at some of his games guy showed a lot of emotion on the court uh and same thing for David Robinson. I mean, David Robinson, to his credit, was very close to being a face of the league. I remember the whole Nike, uh, Mr. Robinson neighborhood, and what was it, Joe? The, the 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 movies that he did, and talk shows he did. So he was close, but you know, Timmy just didn't want that spotlight. You know, and uh, even if he didn't want it, I still would have hoped that the, that the NBA would have put him forward. So you have. The highest winning percentage, keeping off the court distractions to a minimum, 
two faces of a franchise, Robinson and Duncan, that could have been the face of the NBA as far as what the NBA wants out of their players on and off the court. And yet, Devontae Graham, Joe, picked the New York Knicks. The Knicks, Joe. I'm baffled, Joe. I need answers, Joe. Yeah, well, maybe if you ever, you know, interview the kid, you can ask him, hey, man, why did you say this? You know, what are you talking about? Do do we give him a pass considering he's only spent maybe like 20 games with the Spurs? Maybe he's no. not too well versed. No? No. Okay. I thought you were going to be a little forgiving, Joe. You're not no. forgiving when it comes to this, are you? No, man. It, he knows better than that, dude. So he, he, sh- he should have uh, at least had something. It's nice to say about his own team. You know, you're playing for the Spurs, man. Give him some love. Unless he sees the right in the wall, Joe, then he may not be a spur <laughs> <laughs> much longer. Maybe, Maybe that's why he's like, how can I get out of here? Nick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe that's what he wants to be. He wants to be a Nick. Yeah, but uh, I, I really believe the Spurs have a franchise as a whole historically have an argument to be uh, America's NBA team. Hey, we're done talking. We got to let Joe go. He is busy, man. But what I wanted do you to give think? a quick shout out to something oh, ahead, before we end. And one yeah. of my buddies, he's a, he's a, well, he's part of my, my other squad that I hang out with here and I'm, I'm part of, which is the Countdown City Geek Cast. So they're going to be at a convention here. You know, I know how much you like, you know, everything that has to do with, with geek culture. So yes, there's I something do. called Cadabracon that's going to be happening September 29th through October 1st at the Portland Community Center in Portland, Texas. They're going to have a slew of, uh, of special guests there. They're going to have some voice actors. They're going to have mm-hmm. a lot of the Power Rangers, you know, former Power Rangers there. And the oh, voice nice. actors are going to be like uh, the, the voices of uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender, that series. They're going to have a slew of actor, voice actors from there, some actors from Star Wars, that kind of stuff, you know. So nice. check it out, you know. It's, you can go ahead and look for more information at Kadabracon, which is K A D A B R A dot com, uh, dot com, and maybe you can go ahead and make a an appearance there if you're you're back here in the state. You, you know, you know what? I I never even heard of Portland, Texas. Portland, man, like, where it's right is there. that? It's just a stone's throw away where? from Corpus Christi, man. So when you're going from Corpus to Rockport, it's right smack in the middle. So it's that close to San Antonio. Yeah, it's that close to San Antonio. It's not far away at all. Wow. Wow. Never knew that. So we're at near Corpus. Yeah, that sounds like a, a fun event. I think all uh, just nerd fans like myself should go check out. I like these smaller cons because they're a little more intimate. Yeah. And they're not as overwhelming as like New York Comic Con. I've been to New York Comic Con so many times. Let me tell you, that thing's a beast. You cannot do it in one day. It's impossible. You need at minimum two days, and that's two days of just concentrating, not getting sidetracked. Like, I'm going to go to a panel, and then your whole day is done because you're waiting in <laughs> line. Or I'm going to yeah. go get an autograph because the voiceover actor for Goku is there, and you wait in line half the day. You know, yeah. If you just want to soak it in, and you need uh, two days for, like, a New York Comic Con um, that I've, 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 I think I've been to, like, six or seven of them by now. But uh, they are daunting. But yeah, check out that um, Comic Con out in. I'm sorry, what's it called? A Cadabracon? Yeah, Cadabracon. Oh, like Abracadabra. Yeah. Okay. Well, check out the Cadabracon. Google it and uh, get yourself some tickets and head on out there. Get yourself a nice geek t shirt. That's what I always hunt for the geek t shirts. I love yeah. those. Love and we should those. make one and in, in for, for low so you can wear, you know, like a geek style, anime style. Oh, yeah, that, that would, that would be, be cool. cool. Like, yeah, that is an idea. Joe, I'm going to steal that idea. I'm just letting you yeah. know. Hey, could be we'll, using we'll giveaway, Jeff. <laughs> Don't sue me later, Joe. You're like, he he took my idea. So No, I like uh, it. I like it. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great idea. And check out Joe's show, Two Shots Podcasts. Google it, subscribe to it. And, of course, the Acquired Taste, hosted by our good friend Michael Jimenez. Joe is a part of that. He produces it. And he takes part in the conversations as well. Again, sorry for no video scheduling work. You know, you heard Joe is busy right now. He has to go. So this is the only time we could get him on right now. But for Joe Garcia. Oh, before we let you go, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes. Again, 
Uh, we are kind of on hiatus ish a bit during the off season, so our next show will likely be Wednesday. But now for Joe Garcia, I am Jeff Garcia. We're gonna put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs.